and welcome to Schneider House National Historic Sites virtual field trip. My name is Katie and currently we are standing in our traveling exhibit that's been on display here at Schneider House in the gallery. This traveling exhibit is from the Canadian Museum of Nature and it's called the Canadian Wildlife Photography of the Year. And so right beside me is an American bullfrog. And no, my friend here did not make that croaking noise. I did with my wooden frog instrument that you see right here. But why do frogs make that croaking noise at all? Well, the answer is frogs will croak male frogs to attract a mate. So next time you're hanging around a pond or a creek and you hear this familiar croaking sound, that's the sound of a male frog serenading his sweetheart. Now today what we're going to talk about are some differences between amphibians and reptiles because I think that question gets asked a lot. What is the difference? Amphibians like frogs, toads, and salamanders, they are really cool because they live dual lives. They spend half their life in water and half their life on land. And because they spend time in water and live in water, they can breathe through their gills as well as through their lungs. Their skin is also really cool. It's very slippery, it's very uh, soft and thin and smooth, and that helps them to breathe as well. Now, when they lay their eggs, they lay their eggs in water and their eggs are very soft as well. So unlike amphibians, reptiles do not spend half their life underwater. They spend their life on land. And while some, do spend a lot of time hanging out in the water like crocodiles, they do not actually live underneath the water because they can only breathe with their lungs. They don't have gills. And also their skin is very different. Unlike amphibians, reptiles usually have hard, dry, and scaly skin. Also, their eggs are different as well. They will lay hard shell eggs and they lay them on the land as opposed to in the water. So on this table here, I have a few items that should be pretty familiar. Some of you might recognize these two items as snake skins. Now all animals will shed their skin and humans shed their skin as well. Snakes are unique because they will shed their skin as they grow and stretch all at once and get rid of old damaged skin. But only one of these snakes are native to, is native to Canada. Which one do you think? Well, if you guessed the smaller snake skin, you are correct. Thank goodness. This one is from a garter snake. And garter snakes, they can be found in urban areas and forests and wetlands and fields and even in your backyard, perhaps. So they are very, very familiar to our area. This one, and he guesses what this one is. This one is actually a yellow anaconda. Now, yellow anacondas are not native to this area. They can be found uh, in places in South America. So Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina. These are areas where you usually find the yellow anaconda. They get a lot bigger than our garter snakes. They can get as big as 15 feet and 80 pounds. So I'm glad I don't find him in my backyard. Now over here, I have another object that should be familiar and not all reptiles are the same. Some have protective shells and you probably will recognize that this is the shell of a turtle. Now this turtle, it's called a red-eared slider. They can be found in the wild in Canada, but this is kind of a trick question. They're not native to Canada. They're native to Mexico and the southern United States. So how did they get in the Canadian wild? Hmm, any thoughts? Well, red ear sliders are brought into Canada and sold as pets. But this one, it was only about 10 centimeters long. They can get a lot bigger. And for some pet owners, when they grow really big, they're too big to keep. And so what they do, unfortunately, is some have let them into the wild. Red-eared sliders are now considered invasive species because they outcompete our local native turtles and they've been thriving in the wild. So unfortunately, this is one example of the impact humans have had on our natural world and environment. 
So I pose a challenge to you and your class. What can you do to help the local environment and support our natural habitats and our Canadian wildlife?